All right, in this video, we're going to do the rational function word problems from functions trigonometry. So let's start with number one. It says, it will take you 10 hours to paint your garage, and it will take your brother 15 hours to do the same job. How long will it take if the two of you work together to paint the garage? So this is an example of a work problem where we're looking at, let's see, for me, it'll take me 10 hours. And during that time, I could paint one garage. And then I've got my brother. My brother is a little slower than me. In 15 hours, he can paint one garage. And we want to know, together, how long is it going to take? So that's my question mark. So we would usually give this a variable. We're going to call that x, is how long it takes us together. So to do these problems, I need to think of how much of the garage I get painted every hour. So I need to convert these numbers over into rates. So the rate that I paint the garage is I paint one garage in 10 hours, which means I paint one-tenth of a garage for every hour that I work. Now my brother, he paints one garage in 15 hours, which means he paints 1 15th of the garage for every hour that he works. Now together, we want to paint one garage in x number of hours. So in other words, we're going to paint 1 over x of the garage every hour. If we work together, that means that me and my brother need to get added to see what we would get total together. So 1 tenth plus 1 fifteenth has to equal 1 over x because that's how much of the garage we would paint each hour. To solve this, I need to put these two fractions together. So I need a common denominator. The least common denominator between 10 and 15 would be 30. So I'm going to multiply my 1 third by 3 on the top and bottom, and that will be 3 thirtieths. I'm going to multiply my 15 by 2 on the top and bottom, which will be 2 thirtieths. That was equal to 1 over x. So now I have 3 thirtieths plus 2 thirtieths is 5 thirtieths. If I reduce that fraction, 5 thirtieths is equal to 1 sixth. So if 1 sixth is 1 over x, then that means x is 6 hours to paint the garage together. My recommendation when you think you're done is to go back and say, does this make sense? If it took me 10 hours and my brother 15 hours, and we're going to work together, it should take us less time than it took each of us individually. Um, and that's what I got. I got six hours. So that seems pretty good. All right, let's go on to the next problem. So in this one, we have a plumber and his assistant. They finished a job in four hours. So this is together now. The job would have taken the plumber six hours if he were working alone. How long would the job have taken the assistant if he were working alone? So again, we've got the plumber. I'm just going to call him P. We've got the assistant. I'm going to call him A. And then we've got the together amount. So the together amount was four hours. The job would have taken the plumber six hours. So the plumber is six hours. The question is, how long would it have taken the assistant? So that's what I'm looking for. The assistant is x hours. Again, I need to turn these into a rate. So how much of the job do we complete every hour? So for the plumber, the plumber completes one job every six hours, which means he completes one sixth of a job for every hour that he works. So the assistant, he's going to complete one job every 
x hours he works, so that means he completes one x of a job per hour that he works. And then together, we complete one job in four hours, so we complete one fourth of a job every hour that we work. So if we had worked together, if we add up our individual working times, that needs to equal our together time. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over x has to equal 1 over 4. On this equation, I would get the 1 over x by itself. So I would subtract 1 sixth from both sides. So then I'd have 1 over x. If I need to do 1 fourth minus 1 sixth, I need to get a common denominator. My common denominator here would be 12 ths. So 4, 1 fourth is 3 twelfths, and 1 sixth is 2 twelfths. So 3 twelfths minus 2 twelfths is 1 twelfth. So if 1 over x is 1 over 12, then that means x has to be equal to 12. Does this seem reasonable? Would it take my assistant 12 hours to complete the job? Yes, that's realistic. He takes longer than I do, so um, he can complete it in 12 hours. It also takes longer for each of us to do it individually than it took us to do it together. All right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, in this one, we've got parallel processing. Uh, that uses two or more computers working together to solve a single problem. Using parallel processing, two computers can solve a problem in 20 minutes. So that's a together amount. Together is 20 minutes. If working alone, one computer can solve a problem in nine minutes less than the time needed by the second computer. And they want to know how long would it take the faster computer working alone to solve the problem. Okay, so we're going to have one of these situations again where we have two individual things and then also a doing it together rate. I'm going to call them F for the fast computer, S for the slow computer, and T for the together. So I want to know um, how long would it take the faster computer, it says. How long would it take the faster computer? So that's what I want my variable to be. Uh, so he's going to take x, not hours, sorry, we were in minutes, so let me get the right units for this problem. It's going to take x minutes for the fast guy to do it alone. We know that together, up at the top of the problem, it told us it took 20 minutes together. And now we've got the slow guy. It says that the second computer, um, one computer can solve a problem in nine minutes less than the time needed by the second computer. So if our fast computer is x minutes, then our slow computer is going to be nine minutes more than he took. You also could have set this up the other way, where the fast computer was x minus 9, and the slow computer was x. But then we'd be finding the slow computer instead. So all right, let's go ahead. And now we need to turn these into rates. So the fast computer does one, uh, what is it, a problem? One problem in x minutes. The slow computer does one problem in x plus 9 minutes. And together, we do one problem in 20 minutes. So again, I'm going to put these guys and add them up, and that has to give me what I got when I did this together. So I've got 1 over x of the job completed by the fast guy. I've got 1 over x plus 9 of the job completed every minute for the slow guy. And together, that means I've completed 1 20th of the job every minute. Now, this is more traditional looking rational function here. Uh, to solve a problem like this, I usually multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite my problem and just spread it out a bit. Give myself some room to go through and multiply by the least common denominator. So my 
factors for my denominators, I've got an x, I've got an x plus 9, and I've got a 20. I'm going to need all of those. So I'm going to multiply by x times x plus 9 and by 20 to every single fraction. On the left and the right side of the equation, I multiply by x, x plus 9, and 20. x, x plus 9, and 20. The whole reason I like to do that is because I don't want fractions in this problem. So now I can reduce these x's, and my first fraction will just turn into 20 times x plus 9, which would be 20x plus 180 if I distribute. In my second fraction, the x plus 9 factors will reduce out. So I'm just going to add 1 times x times 20, which is 20x. Make sure you're copying down where that equal to symbol is. So I have an equal to symbol next. Then just the 20s are going to reduce from the last fraction. So I have 1x times x plus 9 will reduce to x squared plus 9x when I distribute. All right, this is a quadratic. So I'm going to need to get it equal to zero and try and factor. Okay, I just gave myself a little more space here. I'm going to move everything on the right because I like my x squared to be positive or I can't factor right. So on the left here, I had 20x and 20x. So that was a total of 40x's. When I move them over to the left, I'll subtract them. And 9 minus 40x is negative 31x's. I also had this 180 that was added on the left. So when I move it over to the right, I'll be subtracting it to move it over. Now I'm equal to zero. Um, so now I'm looking for what two things multiply to negative 180 uh, and add to negative 31. So I know one has to be positive, one has to be negative. Uh, I can think of things that go in to 180 and 5 times 36 will give me 180. If I make the 36 negative, then we'll multiply to a negative and add to a negative 31. Okay, so my two factors here are x plus 5 and x minus 36. That was equal to 0, so now I need to set each factor equal to 0, would give me x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 36. This either solution is fine in the rational equation, but we have to remember what it represents. X represents how long it takes the fast computer to do the problem. So really, a computer can't do a problem in negative five minutes. So it looks like 36 is really our best option. So um, it takes 36 minutes for the fast computer. Okay, again, when we think we're good, we want to go back and say, does this make sense? If it takes 20 minutes together, then it should take 36 minutes or a longer time for the fast computer to do it all by himself. Looks good. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, here we are on the last one. It says, working together, Tom and Jerry painted a fence in eight hours. So that's our together number. Together is eight hours. Last year, Tom painted the fence by himself. The year before, Jerry painted it by himself, but it took 12 hours less than Tom took. How long did Tom and Jerry take when each was painting alone? So we'll go through all that words again in just a second. But pretty much what we have here, we have how long is it going to take Tom, we have how long is it going to take Jerry, and how long is it going to take us together. Well, let's try and find those out. The first thing I can see there was my working together. It took eight hours. So together, I've got eight hours. Now, I need to find out how long did each of them take. So it doesn't really matter who I choose. So I'm going to call my variable Tom. Uh, so Tom takes X hours. So if I've got Tom taking X hours, now I've got to figure out how long it takes Jerry. It says, Jerry painted it by himself. It took 12 hours less than Tom. So if Jerry is 12 hours less than Tom, then Jerry is going to take x minus 12 hours. All right, so now we need to convert these into rates. So for Tom, Tom is going to paint 1x of a fence in every hour. Jerry is going to paint 1 x minus 12th of a fence in every hour. And together, 
we're going to paint one eighth of a fence every hour. So we're going to add up our two times, and that has to equal the together time. So Tom's got 1 over x, Jerry's got 1 over x minus 12, and together we're 1 over 8. So I'm going to rewrite this, just spreading it out so I have room because this is a rational equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator to get the denominators uh, out of the problem. So I need to multiply everybody by 8, x, and x minus 12. So I'm going to write the 8x first this time. 8x times x minus 12. 8x times x minus 12. 8x times x minus 12. Notice I did balance by putting it on the left and the right side of the equation. And when I multiply, I have to distribute to everybody. So now I'm going to reduce. I've got an x down here on the bottom and an x on the top. So my first fraction is 1 times 8 times x minus 12. So I'll distribute, which will give me 8x minus 96. In my second fraction, I've got my x minus 12 on the top and bottom, so that can reduce. And I was adding here 1 times 8 times x, so that's just add 8x. Next thing I had was the equal symbol. Be sure you leave that in there so you know what's on the left and the right. My 8s can reduce out, and I have 1 times x times x minus 12. So I'm going to distribute that x, which would give me x squared minus 12x. Again, I have a quadratic. I like to make my quadratics equal to 0. I had my x squareds on the right, and they were positive, so I'll leave them there. On the left, I had 8x, and another 8x is 16x. I will subtract 16x to move it over to the right, which gives me minus 28x when I move it over with the 12x that was already there. I also had a minus 96x when I move it over would be plus 96. So now I'm ready to try and factor this thing. So I'm looking for what two things multiply to 96 and add to negative 28. In order to multiply to a positive, I have to be a negative times a negative. So what two numbers can multiply to 96 and add to 28? Uh, that is 4 and 24 would multiply to 96 and add to 28. So my two factors here are x minus 4 and x plus 24. I'm sorry, x minus 24. Solving each of those gives me x equals 4 and x equals 24. Both of those might seem like realistic answers right now. Tom could take four hours to paint a fence, and Tom could take 24 hours to paint a fence. But remember that Jerry has to take 12 hours less than Tom. So if Tom tries to take four hours, then that means Jerry's got to take negative eight hours. So we're going to cross that one out. That doesn't make sense in our problem. Uh, if we make Tom take 24, and Jerry takes 12 hours less, that means that Jerry takes 12. And this is more realistic because together they paint the fence in less time than it takes either of them individually, and together they painted the fence in eight hours. So these were some examples of work problems, and come in and let us know if you have more questions. Thanks.